Just around the corner as you get a look at New Era Field just south of Buffalo, New York. A few moments ago, to the delight of this Buffalo crowd, it was the Bills racing out of the tunnel as they get set to match up with the Baltimore Ravens. They'll bring it back to just about the 25, call it the 24-yard line. 57, Mike, 57. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Now a man closing in on 15,000 career rush yards, Frank yes, Gore. Sir. Call it officially a loss of two on the first play from scrimmage. Second down. Okay, there's a tone setter. First play from scrimmage. Stuff him in the backfield. You know what they were doing last night in the hotel room? <laughs> Visualizing exactly that. That's what they were thinking about. Making that play. Having leverage. Lower than the offensive lineman. Getting into the offensive backfield. Knocking someone down. Just what you said. Setting the tone early for this game. Jeez, you are fired up. When I see a play like that, I can't help it. Now a deep ball there on second down, but it'll wind up incomplete. Well, that certainly looked like something that they discussed all week in practice getting ready for this one. Take the big shot right out of the gate. At worst, you'll open up the defense a little bit, loosen them up, have them back on their heels. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. He may try and run for this, and he slides to avoid the hit. That was a good effort there, trying to do it on his own. But as a defender, you're in a tough spot because you have coverage responsibilities behind you. And if you take off too quick to try and get him down, he might loft it over your head. So better to track with your man defensively than try to go up and make a stop on the quarterback. Exactly right. What you're hoping is that your guys in the front seven can get him down. He steps into this one, and this is a rocket. And that one hits a little too close to the goal line. Go, and it continues into the end zone for a touchback. Baltimore taking the field again here. And as we mentioned earlier, getting the win over San Fran this past week to get to 10-2. That's now eight straight victories for the Ravens. That's a new franchise record. And you mentioned that they are going to have their, in all likelihood, their second consecutive division crown in the AFC North. Last year, they barely got it at the end of the season. They've got a full three-game lead this year. Yeah, they could cruise to the title. It won't be easy because they have to go to Buffalo next. And Buffalo has to have that game in order to keep pace in the wild card race. And they're playing pretty well. But then after that, they're home against the Jets. Then they take on the Browns. And then they're home for Pittsburgh. So you're right. They've got a chance to kind of cruise in. But I don't think they're going to play it that way. They've got a lot of momentum going. They're clicking on offense with Lamar Jackson. And the defense has really stepped up its game. Hard to move the ball against those Ravens. And some incentive not to cruise to the finish line is right now they're the number one seed in the AFC by virtue of their win and the Patriots' loss in Houston this last week. They'll try to run for the first with Ingram. And he won't be close to a first down as he runs into a wall right around the line of scrimmage. No gain there on the play, and that's going to leave him with a fourth down. So on fourth down, here's Sam Cook to punt it away. The all-pro Andre Roberts deep for Buffalo. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the Bills will take over the football with a first and ten. Football going back to the Buffalo Bills. And, Charles, these Bills are 9-3 and three now, three straight wins. This last week, the victory over the Cowboys on Thanksgiving. Maybe their first real showcase in front of a national audience. A lot of folks getting their first look at these Bills. Are they getting the respect that they deserve for a 9-3 and three team? Well, I think most people went into that game on Thanksgiving Day and said, hold it a second. They've beaten the Jets, the Giants, the Bengals, the Titans, the Dolphins, Washington, the Dolphins again. Denver, and then they finally beat the Cowboys. Now, the Cowboys' record is nothing to write home about, but they are the Dallas Cowboys. It was Thanksgiving Day. National audience, and they beat them down. I think they're getting respect now because of who they beat and in, in, in the situation that they handled it. Look out for this, this Bills team. A huge game coming up because they host the red-hot Baltimore Ravens this week. The Ravens bring out an extra defensive back here on third. 
working out of the shotgun. Here's Allen. Man open. That's Robert Foster complete. 11 yards and a Buffalo first down. As far as undrafted players go, Philip Lindsay took most of the headlines a season ago. But remember, Robert Foster was undrafted out of Alabama as well, signed with the Bills in May of 2018 and had a pretty good year. 27 catches, 541 yards. On first down, it's Gore. And this winds up a pickup of two, maybe two and a half to about the 39. Well, we saw him there trying to get it to the outside, trying to get to the perimeter, but not a whole lot of room there. But there's got to be one positive to that. If you keep moving laterally, creases tend to develop as the game moves on, and they can run it back inside later. From the 39, Allen. He's got the connection to Cole Beasley. And he'll go down right around the 47 this time. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. Well, they obviously red man covers their partner, and he got downfield, broke down the defender, made him what do you think. Mean by that? Broke yeah, he made him think he was going to run a different route. Probably thought he was going to take it upfield. Then he curls back inside for the completion. They'll run on first down. Gore. And forget about finding a lane. He barely had time to look up before he was planted in the backfield. They'll wind up losing three yards here. And it'll bring up a second and 13. Watch 30. You ain't got nothing. You ain't got nothing. <laughs> From the gun, it's Allen. And he finds Tyler Croft. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. And he's going to be taken down with the first down at the Ravens 39. When this offense can get their tight ends involved, they can move the football. Here, a nice route, able to look it in, and picks up the first down. So in Raven territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 39-yard line. On the counter, Gore. And he'll run straight into a wall of tacklers at the line of scrimmage. It's second down. Nice job there defensively to clamp down because really they've been on their heels this drive. Agreed, and they really needed that one for confidence, just to feel a little bit better. But I don't know if I would be daunted by them stopping me on one run. This drive has gone pretty well. I could come right back at them. Looking to throw on second down. Allen. And he's going to have the connection to Foster. And he's going to be taken down with the first down at the Ravens' 15-yard line. Allen going to come to the line here, first and 10. And he's four for four now, throwing the ball to start the drive. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. Coverage was very good that time. A nice job to smother him as the ball arrived, and that ensured an incomplete pass. And it keeps six points off the board. Mike so now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. Let's go, defense. Let's go, defense. Allen going to throw again. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. So back-to-back -back incompletions. Third down here in 10, but you're still in field goal range. And that's the thing to keep in mind. They're in field goal range. So now you don't take any unnecessary risks, but you try and find a way to get back to what you were doing earlier in the drive in order to finish this one off. Now Allen. He can run for it, and he will. And he's going to come up well shy of the first here as the tackle's made right around the 12. The decision to tuck and run gets him three, but that's not enough. Now it's fourth. And they had an extra defensive back on the field on that play, and the coverage was excellent. He tried to pull it down and run for it, but they rallied to him and kept him short of a first down. And the 11-year veteran bangs it through, and the Bills will take a 3-0 lead. So they get three, certainly hoping for six after a 13-play drive. So you console yourself on defense by saying you did your job, right? If they go 13 plays, you only give up a field goal. You did a nice job there. But here's the other part. 13 plays, you don't force any mistakes. You don't take the ball away. 
Maybe that's the way they should look at it. Now after the made field goal, Hauschka back out onto the field to kick it away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And this return nets positive as he gets past the 25 and up to the 27-yard line. And the Ravens taking the field. And on the first drive, three and out. And I know that these are professional athletes, but I would imagine sometimes you, you get the nerves at the beginning of a game still, don't you? Those don't ever go away. And typically, what I've heard from guys and what I remember from playing, if you don't have nerves at the start of a game, it's not going to be a great day for you. You're not really ready to play. So finding a way to harness those nerves and not let them affect you in a negative way, that's what all the guys are looking for. Call it a loss of two on the play. And that'll make it second and 12. Here's Jackson to throw. Oh, he got position on him, and he pulls it in. A big one there for the Ravens. It goes for 18. Nice throw there by Jackson. You think about what a boost he gave Baltimore in the middle of last year. Led them to victories in six of their last seven games as a starter, replacing Joe Flacco, who had the hip issue. And that strong finish was good enough for the Ravens to capture their first AFC North crown since 2012. And now Jackson's a known commodity. He's the unquestioned starter and with increased expectations and pressure on the former Heisman Trophy winner. Plays like we just saw there. That's why they're up right now. And the defense, they're doing their job. Yeah, it starts with the guys up front. So when you talk with GMs who are putting together a team, a lot of them say, we're going to build from the inside out because if you control the line of scrimmage, you control the rest of the ball game. And that's what we're seeing here. They're actually playing in the offense's backfield, not necessarily just playing at the line of scrimmage. They'll give him a yard on the play. And that'll bring up a third and 11 situation. And just in general, Charles, on a play like that, how tough is it for the defense to account for a running back essentially being a receiver downfield? It's very difficult, especially if the running back has skills like a receiver, and you're aware of that before the game even begins. So throughout your practice sessions, you're going to want to be aware of him. Where is he lining up? What can he do? What kind of damage can he do to us downfield? And who can match up with him? without weakening our overall defense. You're exactly right. It's a tough task to match up to him. Jackson and the offense come up first and 10, and he's four for four now, throwing the ball to start the drive. Back to the running game. It's Ingram. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down, a very solid gain on that play. After the pickup of five, here's second and five. Jackson. Sneed's got it. And he's able to get it to the edge of the red zone at the 20-yard line. Seven yards there and a first down. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before you get a good head of steam going. This is Ingram on first and 10. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. Pretty effective run there, and now they can start to smell that end zone. Pound the rock. Make sure you use your O-line to set the tone of dominance and physicality, and pound the rock. The last run got nine. That leaves him with second and a yard. Now it's Jackson looking middle, and it's incomplete. It was Teron Johnson that time who had that play covered from the start. I think that's a big time play there because the slant route is really hard to cover because the timing is so quick. But able to see it, diagnose it, and get to the football, that's why he was able to bat it away. 
Ninth play coming up here on this drive. This is third and a yard. To throw is Jackson. Rolling to his right. He may try and run for this. And he picks up the first as he's able to take it down to the seven-yard line. Four yards there as they let him out of the pocket, and he got enough for the first. Nothing after one on EA Sports. They'll run here with Ingram, and he is into the end zone for a Baltimore touchdown. Taking it in from seven yards away. And the Ravens have taken the lead. I know we don't talk about it enough, but the intelligence level of the guys up front blocking, the offensive linemen, maybe the smartest guys in football overall. Add in a little bit of athleticism and a whole lot of toughness, you've got a lot to deal with, don't you? That's why the guys in the backfield get them really nice Christmas gifts, right? If they're smart, they do. Tucker able to connect on the extra point, and that makes it a 7-3 lead. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Here's the Buffalo offense now as they get set to take over here. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember, they did put points on the board. Three points is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. And the first play of the drive there is incomplete. Well, CD, while we have a quick second here, I want to give a shout-out to three teams who have struggled mightily this year who all got wins in Week 12. The Dolphins, the Redskins, and for their first win of the season, the Bengals. How about you? I love your empathy, right? You hate to see teams struggle like this. Hate to see teams that are down. And when they get wins, you come with a little bounce, don't you? You got a little extra spring in your step. Those Bengals, and they beat the Jets, who at the time were hot, right? Yep. They won three in a row. How about Washington? That win over Carolina. And then, of course, the Dolphins. No one really saw that coming. Their win over Philadelphia, even though it was at home. Could those wins for those teams be the death knell for the teams that lost. The Jets, eh, we're not going to talk about them anymore. Carolina, they still thought maybe a late run could put them in the playoff race in the NFC South. And then how about Philadelphia? But they're not out of it. No. They still control their destiny. If they win out, they go 9-7 and seven and win the NFC East. Yeah, because they're just one game back of 6-6 six and six Dallas. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. They were trying to go to Brown once again, and that'll bring up second down. Even without a ton of pressure in his face, it just shows how difficult it is to pick apart his own defense. Those guys are sitting back, and they're not playing receivers as much as they're playing the eyes of the quarterback and when he delivers the ball. Now on second down, this is Gore. And nowhere for him to go again. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage. That's it. Call it no gain on the run there, and now they'll be looking at a third down. And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. Hey, man, hey, man. Watch the boot. Watch the boot. Throwing his Allen on third. And it falls incomplete after almost being intercepted. 
A pick there would have been great. The good news for the defense now, it's fourth down. Not only was the call spot on, how about the execution of that defense right there? Zone was absolutely locked up tight. He was trying to force it in there on third down. But if there's a time to force it, he felt like he needed to make a play, right? Yeah, exactly right. Third down, you got to try and find something. There's nothing available there for him. And now Baltimore gets set to take the field. And they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline. Because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you scored points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. Jackson and the Ravens come up now first and 10 at their own 11. They'll run with Ingram here to begin the drive. And he'll take this one only up to about his 13-yard line. Lorenzo Alexander brings him down. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. On second down now, it's Ingram. And a nice gain there as he'll be taken down just shy of the 20. Give him six That's on the play, and all of a sudden it, here, it's third down. Baltimore was the most run-heavy team in the league last year after Lamar Jackson took over as a starter, and you think about Mark Ingram. He goes from a situation where he was sharing time with Kamara in New Orleans. Now he figures to be the top guy in the Baltimore backfield, although I guess you could say he's kind of splitting time with his quarterback, Lamar Jackson, but a great veteran presence Mark Ingram is behind Jackson. Ingram now in his ninth NFL season. Give him seven yards on the play as they do pick up the third down conversion. First down, Ingram, and that one blown up quickly as he's going to be stopped before he could even get started. That'll set him back with a loss of three on the play, and that'll make this a second and 13. And now Jackson will look to throw it. He's going to take off with it. Room here to run. And he'll avoid the tackle there with a slide. Jackson always a threat to run. He's got the first down. He was the NFL's leading rusher among QBs a year ago. Partner, he was going through his progressions. Not there, not there. After about the third one, he decided he better pull it down and run for it. And he slides down and avoids the hit for good measure. All runs on this drive so far. It's first and ten. Here's Snead as they run the jet sweep. And he'll take it across midfield and into Buffalo territory. <laughs> Tremaine Edmonds, the Bills' leading tackler as a rookie last year, in on the stop there. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down, a very solid gain on that play. From just shy of midfield, Jackson, Roberts has it. And he's got a first down as a this. tackle made at the Bills 37. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there, keeps the sticks moving. Here we go. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. We won it. Go. From the gun, it's Jackson. It's complete to Snead. And he's got this down almost to the 20 before he's dropped. That's good for a Raven first down, 15 yards there. Now that was pretty. They executed that curl route versus zone coverage, and that changes things a little bit because against man, it's often a tight curl, tight, a sharply run route. Against zone, you're just looking for that open spot, that dead area, so you may curl it a little bit wider just to get to that place. And usually a tight window, he fired a bullet in there for the completion. Trent Murphy, the one to bring him down. That's a good play by the guys on the defensive side of the ball. Held him to a gain of two. And that changes the playbook a little bit now for the guy calling plays. Second and eight. Now he's got to probably think about going to the air instead of maybe staying with the ground game. On second down, Ingram. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Chalk that up as a four-yard loss. And now it's third down. 
An interesting and intriguing decision there defensively because they kept extra DBs on the field despite seeing the multiple tight end look that came out for the offense. I thought they were going to switch out of it. I didn't know if they felt they didn't have time or what the case was. Well, in any event, the extra speed allowed for great penetration as they stuffed that one behind the line of scrimmage. And he gets it inside the 10 to the 9. Lamar Jackson, you're such right, a threat right. with those you're legs, right. able to improvise and get the first. These type of plays are backbreakers for a defense. They thought they had him hemmed in, thought they were going to get him on the ground with the pass rush, but were unable to do so. He gets away, picks up a big first down, and sets up first and goal inside the 10. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. And he'll take this from the 9 down to about the 7. Defensively, pretty good start there with their backs against the wall. That's a win for the stop troops right there. And if I'm them, I get a little bolder now. They won the first battle, keep coming after them, put the pressure on them. The line of scrimmage, the seven now on second and goal. 49, 49, come on, 49. Rap, rap. On second down, it's Edwards. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Ravens yeah, touchdown. Taking it in from seven yards away as the Ravens push further out in front. Solid job up front. Really just a solid job all the way around to get that one in. Yeah, that was well executed, wasn't it? Well blocked, well run. End result, six points. Touchdown. Tucker with the extra point. And the decision to just kick the extra point winds up successful. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Here's the Buffalo offense now as they get set to take over here. And it's been very much a slow start for them. Three drives and just the three points, CD. Yeah, if you're into the points per drive ratio, that answer is one. And that's not going to get it done in a ball game. They've got to find a way to finish these drives in end zones, not having balls go through goalposts. A run there on first down going nowhere as he stopped right at the 25. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. Doubling this guy has to be a priority before moving up to the next level because the big fella, he just ate that one alive, just stuffed it. In fact, before the game, he was talking to us, and he's like, hey, these pants make me look fat. And we said, nah, man, you're just a whole lot of guy. He is at well over 300 pounds. He's a big man. They'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets him up for third down. So from second and long, now we go to third and very manageable. Yeah, they love that phrase, don't they? Because as an offensive coordinator, you can keep people a little bit off balance and guessing because you don't have to throw it. You can come back with a strong run game if you want to. And if you're in four down territory, that really opens things up for you. Now it's Gore. Tell you what, you need the tough yards. You can still turn to the 36-year-old Frank Gore now in his 15th season in the league. 10 in San Francisco, the 3 in Indy, quick stop in Miami, and now in Buffalo and still making it happen. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. And now they'll throw with Allen. It's brought in complete. It's John Brown. John Brown past the 20. And all the way home for a Bills touchdown. John Brown. 65 yards as his guys are back within a single score. 
And nothing too crazy there. A quick slant, and then he just had a seam. He found a seam. And when you hit it on the run like that, and I mean the pass right to the receiver who's already in motion and moving, sometimes he just takes it and runs away from everyone else. And he ran it into the end zone. And the defense, they've got to adjust there quickly. That's tough on them. That's really tough because everything was executed well. Ball was out of his hands quickly, into the hands of the receiver, and then he was gone. Hauschka now to send this one away following the score. This one fielded at the five. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. The Ravens offense now, they get set and head back onto the field. They're starting to pull away with this one. Early on that first quarter, they didn't look so great offensively. What has changed? Sometimes it's just a matter of doing what you plan to do better. Sometimes you just put that all together and you execute. Other times it's just in a simple adjustment in your game plan, finding a spot that maybe was a little weaker than maybe you thought, and going to that. So many different things, so many different ways, but right now you got to like what they're doing. They have put distance between themselves and their opponent. Looking to add on here in the second quarter. Here's second and nine, just a yard on that last run. Here we go. Here we go. Another carry for the workhorse tonight, Ingram. Give him eight yards there. Still a few inches to go, though, as it'll be third down at about the length of the football. Okay, he didn't break that one all the way, but you got to know that he feels like he's right on the verge, and that's probably exactly what he's telling him in the huddle right now. The offense on third down tonight, they've been near perfect, four for five to this point. They're looking at third and a few inches. They run, it's Mark Ingram, and he's taken down at the 43, but not before picking up the first. It's a gain of four there, and it gives him a new set of downs. Brandon, they're still in the lead, but momentum's certainly been going the opposite direction. So to me, that's a really important pickup there on third down. Try and regain some confidence, and you're right. They need to stem the tide a little bit. That certainly helped. Throwing on first down, it's Jackson. Slide, and he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. That's a cornerback in for the sack, Tredavious White. And their sack inaugural City, sack of the game coming from an unlikely source. You mean it wasn't a linebacker? It wasn't a defensive end? It was somebody like you. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, that's a surprise for the offense. That's not what they normally get when they think about pressure. Coming up to the line, and they will need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. To try again after the sack. Jackson, he's got his man. It's Andrews. Yeah, baby. And, partner, I think that was a great example that not all tight ends are created equal because everything was right. Got the completion, but he's not one of the more dynamic guys in the league. So even though he caught it, couldn't turn it into much more. Yeah, baby. They had the catch on second down, but it didn't help at all. And now they're looking at third down here. Now it's Ingram. Now the Bills are going to use the first of their timeouts. So as they take it over, we step aside. Here's Sam Cook now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. And did they keep it in? They did. They kept it in. It's down close to the goal line at the one-yard line. 
You rarely call your punter a weapon, but he certainly was there. How about that? Pinning him down at the one-yard line and helping out the defense in a big way. I'm telling you what, if I'm a defensive coordinator, I might be thinking safety right now. Mike. Here we go, here we go. Got double tight, double tight. Hey, 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 we got three down, three down. Let's go! A first carry for Patrick DeMarco. And he'll get this only up to about the three-yard line. Oh, boy, I know you felt that Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it way. second and nine. That's someone who's pretty happy right there. That's the defensive coordinator. Body after body getting to him before he can get started. 48. 180. You get this, boys. You think you get this? And here's carry number 10 for Frank Gore. And he'll get it up to the 12-yard line here. Nine yards to pick Let's up go. there, and it's a first down. Tremendous blocking by the interior of the offensive line. They didn't just gash him there. They blasted a gaping hole for him to gallop through. I think if he comes back to the huddle, he better be giving them a whole lot of credit and thanking them for that much space to rumble. Now the Bills will use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. First down, Allen. And an alley to run. And he will avoid the contact as he slides to a stop. He'll get eight on the scramble there. It'll be second and a couple. Now that was not a bad scramble there on first down. He didn't force it, nor did he throw it away. He was able to take off, and now he made it a very manageable second and short. Allen try to hurry everybody up to the line of scrimmage. Looking to throw again on second down. Allen, and he finds Beasley complete. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. 11 yards and a Buffalo first down. The Bills are going to go ahead and use their final timeout as the clock will stop with 21 Let's seconds go. to go here in the first half. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. So the shotgun snap to Allen. Oh, Allen cannot get away, and down he goes. So we've reached halftime here in a four-point game. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach, all right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. This fielded at the two. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28-yard line. Out come the Ravens Let's now. Go. They'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. They have the lead. Now they'll be looking to extend that lead. And this is where I enjoy talking about one of my favorite subjects, tendency breakers or counters, as I also like to call them. You've done things in a certain way in the first half, and they've had ability to see what you've done. They're going to make their adjustments. So guess what? You adjust yourself and try and stay ahead of the pace because you are looking for some separation in this ball game. The adjustment to the adjustment. Without a doubt. <laughs> show them one thing, hit them with something else. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. Partner, I think from our experience together, we have learned that most offensive coordinators are going to tell you, if I'm going to run the football on first down, I've got to get at least four yards. they got five here. They've got to feel pretty good about that one. And a 20th carry now for Ingram. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 10 yards there, good enough for a Raven first down. They're trying to show that they can run the ball and protect this lead. Give it to the backs, play a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point, going to make that defense stand up and stop them. They'll run on first down. 
It's Ingram. And very little daylight there. He'll get a couple up to the 44. It, baby. We know that old expression, it's not my night. It hasn't been his so far. I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy. Sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage, but it's been a tough go for him. And every time he looks up, somebody's there defensively. That was the same case on that play. On second down, it's Ingram. They follow up the gain of two with a gain of one that time. But now they're in a spot that every team tells us when we have our production means they don't want to be in third and long. And that's because those back-to-back -back running plays just didn't accomplish a whole lot. An extra defensive back here for the Bills on third down. Jackson from the shotgun. And he can't find anywhere to go with it. And he goes down. And Oliver able to drop him for a loss of two, and that will bring up fourth down. That would be exactly what they were looking for coming out to start the third quarter. Get a sack, get off the field, get the momentum going in their direction. Get the ball back to your offense, right? Get that momentum because, hey, this lead is very, very slim. On is the putter, Cook, who sends it away. And this will hit just beyond the goal line as it's into the end zone for a touchback. So here's the Bills offense. Now they get ready for their first possession of the second half. They're down in this game. A chance for the offense, though, to put something on the board, get some momentum here in half two. Try and get things kick-started for them. And you know at the half, they discussed how they were going to get that done. This is where scripting comes into play a lot how, of the how time. How many plays do you script coming out of the second most, most of the time in the first half, you're scripting 12 to 16. I think in the second half, you're really scripting more like 8 to 10. Kind of a starter or an opener, whatever, they, whatever terminology they use. Just something to get you off to a quick start. But when you hit him on the move like that, and he's able to get into open field with a full head of steam, oh, oh boy, it's going to be tough to get him down. Yeah, there was a big window. They're lucky they did get him down. Allen now looks to throw. Looking right sideline, but it's incomplete. Robert Foster, the intended receiver, but it's going to be second down. A uh, CD with that incompletion. Let's look at some of the big games week 13. So these are ones that our crew probably think of the biggest four. Let's rank them one to four as far as how big they are and what they mean. Baltimore at Buffalo, San Fran at New Orleans, KC at New England, Seattle at the Rams. How would you rank those? What do you think? Well, this is going to sound self-serving since I'm working San Francisco at New Orleans, but to me that's the number one game because the number one seed in the NFC will be determined that week for that moment, mm -hmm. okay? The winner of that becomes the number one seed. I think the number two game, Seattle at the Rams. Because okay. Seattle's trying to maintain pace with San Francisco or become the number one team in the NFC West. And the Rams have to have it if they have any designs of making the playoffs. The number three game, Baltimore at Buffalo. Buffalo's announced its presence. That big win on Thanksgiving Day over Dallas. But Baltimore's the hottest team, the best team in the league over the last eight weeks. And then you finish up Kansas City, New England. How is that the number four game? I know. Hard to believe, but it is in this day, in this instance. So in Raven territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 35-yard line. On first down, Gore. And they're able to swarm him behind the line, and his rough night oh, yeah. continues. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. I have to think a major focus of the halftime means had to be figuring out how to create space for the running game to get operating. Well, what you pointed out to me at half Why seems accurate. Team? That line has struggled to sustain blocks. Yeah, I would agree with that totally. They've got to focus on staying on their double teams at the first level, make sure that block's secured before they slide off and try and chip someone at the second level. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. After that throw, and it was definitely one that he would love to have back, I wonder what's going through his head. I wonder what kind of mind game he's playing with himself to get himself back on track. Because a lot of guys, that's what they do. They have little triggers that when the mechanics are off or if they make a bad throw, that they go to that place to get themselves back in sync. And he's going to be taken down with the first down at the Ravens 16. Allen now, six for six since coming back out of the locker room. It's first and ten. Inside the red zone here, they'll look to throw. 
And this is going to be intercepted. It's the former Seahawk, Earl Thomas. Well, partner, Thanksgiving in the rearview mirror, Black Friday, Cyber Monday, all gone. And now if you look at the top four seeds right now as we hit, is it the quarter pole or the three-quarter pole? It is the quarter pole. And we get to thank our NFL reporter, Randy Moss, who also has a great background in the sport of Kings for letting us know that's one of the most misused terms in that sport. It is the quarter pole, right? What are they headed for the home stretch is what he also said about it. I can't wait to see how this thing ends. Well, we got New England and Baltimore, the top two seeds in the AFC, Seattle and New Orleans in the NFC. You think it stays that way at the end? I think it's going to be a heck of a battle. I think Baltimore, yes. New England's going to get a battle from Buffalo, but I think they're going to stay in the spot. Seattle, they're going to battle San Francisco. They're just going to trade it back and forth, and it's going to come down to week 17, I believe, to decide that one. And New Orleans, yes, they will retain a top two spot. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. This is Ingram. And he went backwards. He'll be down at the 30. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. Uh, that's a tough one right there. He ran right into the teeth of the blitz as the linebacker was freed up in order to stuff that one for a loss. I think quarterbacks got to see that. Got to find a way to audible into something a little more advantageous. On second down now, it's Ingram. After getting stuffed on first down, not much better there. Two-yard gain. So where'd all that running room that he had in the first half go? Because it looks like it's drying up a little bit here. Someone made some adjustments, it appears, at least on this drive. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. From the gun, Jackson. He finds Roberts, complete. And he's free going down the left side. It's a foot race. And all the way in for a Ravens touchdown. Seth Roberts, 68 yards as the Ravens push further out in front. As a former DB, you might not like to see that, but from a wide receiver's perspective, those are the plays they dream of. Correct on both counts, all right? Because once he took off, I mean, let's face it, that should have been done in big sky country. Aren't any speed <laughs> limits out there? And off he went. Glad I wasn't the one trying to chase him. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. This will be taken in at the one. And he'll get it up to about the 26-yard line just across the 25. And here come the Bills. And they had a nice little drive going last time through the interception in the red zone. Costly. Bad enough to throw it anywhere, but that drives coaches insane when they're thinking about Hey, we've got a shot at points already. We're already in a spot where you're thinking you've got three on the board for sure. And to come away with nothing, that's a really tough one for them to swallow. Yeah, will they make up for it? And he's taken down but able to slip across the 35. 12 yards that time and a Bills first down. I got a kick out of that one, partner. You and I talk often about trying to hide receivers in certain situations, but a guy of his size... Can't really hide him. But the tight end drag route, definitely an effective way to sneak him across the formation for an easy completion and a first down. Now this one complete to Robert Foster. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. I always laugh when people say, what's the toughest route to defend? And I'm like, any of them, especially if it's a good receiver, that makes things very difficult. But when you're running a drag route, something short, shallow, going through defenders, using guys almost as, as screens in order to get open, that makes things tougher, guys trying to get to the football. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. 
He shook his head right when he released that throw. He knew it was going to be a little off target. Yeah, the excitement got him on that one. Wasn't able to control the fact the receiver was open, and it would have been an easy throw. This Jimmy! offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Again, they'll throw with Allen. And that's complete to Croft. And he will have the first down as he gets this to the 47. Move the chains, a gain of seven on third down. And that one was a lot of fun right there because that was the game within the game. Third and short, blitz was on. What's the key for the quarterback? Get out of your hands in a hurry. And that was a quick little completion. Got the job done for a first down. They'll run on first down. Gore. And they go backwards here, losing yardage back at the 48-yard line. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. Sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, it's the third quarter, no time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire ball game. Maybe change up some blocking assignments or run a few different plays, but stay with the overall essence of the running game. Another carry now for Gore. And they'll get this just to the 47, one-yard gain. Well, they still have time to get him established, but in my estimation, they've got to pick up the urgency here. They've got to get quickly in and out of the huddle and run off a bunch more plays. Mike Brown, 80! Hey, what's the ball? What's the ball? On play action, Allen, he'll buy, and he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. We've watched this a long time, and I still don't believe we get it. Third and long, why are you calling play action? Yeah, because they're not going to bite defensively, right? No, not at all. I did have a coach explain to me years ago that for some teams, that's how they have to deal with pass protection and their line blocking. But to me, it seems silly. Yeah, well, they're silly, and it leads to a play action sack. He's averaging just under 50 yards a punt as he gets this away. And that'll hit in the end zone. Much too much leg there. That'll be a touchback. Now the Baltimore offense heading back out onto the field. Last time they were out here, they had the benefit of good field position, led to a touchdown. This time, they're going to have to work for it. They are, but with that last drive that culminated in a touchdown, I think they carry that confidence into this one. doesn't matter where you start with the football now. They have to feel great about their opportunity. Here's Jackson. That's into the hands of the tight end, Boyle. And they'll get eight out of this before being stopped at the 28. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice, easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. Line of scrimmage, the 28 now as they come up on second and a couple. Jackson now off the bootleg. And that going to be incomplete. A lot of contact, no call, and it's third down. Those passes out that far wide always make you hold your breath a little bit. Felt like it was in the air for a while. What it does is it allows a defender to gain some ground, come from a long distance, and have a chance to affect the pass. After the incompletion, here now, third and two. Jackson, options out left. He can run for it, and he will. And he will have a first down as they get him to the ground at the 37. That will go for nine yards and a first down on the keeper. Well, if you're going to run the read option, typically, you've got to keep an eye on the defensive end. And what does that mean? What are you looking for with a defensive end? Well, you want to play off of what he does. If he collapses inside towards the running back, then you pull it and take it yourself outside in. If he stays outside, you go ahead and leave it with the running back. In this case, pulled it and got good yardage himself. An excellent pickup of 20 Let's yards. Go. Let's go! Let's go! I like watching the wide receiver screen because it's a real teamwork play. Because guess what? The guy catching the ball, he'll get all the credit. But how about the people up to block in front of him, either fellow receivers or offensive linemen? That makes that play a really nice timing play, and sometimes it can break big. On first down, Ingram. And he is swallowed up right at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. His carries tonight, they're getting up there, so maybe one of those every now and then is understandable. I would agree with that. Understandable every now and then. Sometimes you come back and you fake it to him and go play action. But other times you say, okay, they got him on that one. We'll come back to him in another carry. Ingram again. Call it a gain of four, and it'll leave him with a third down and six to go. 
third quarter and you've got the lead, you're not ready to go into that four-minute offense to close the game out, but a running game can really benefit your team right now. The line to gain is the 33 on third down. From the gun, Jackson. They'll roll him out right. He may try and run for this. And he'll slide down to avoid the tackle. And he's got a first down as the tackle made at the Bills' 20-yard line. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. And that'll do it for the end of the second quarter. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. They'll run on first down. It's Ingram. And just a couple yards there down to the 17. A minimal gain there on the eighth play of the drive. Well, no doubt here in the fourth quarter, this is a huge defensive series. Hey, they can read the scoreboard. They realize if they give up a field goal here, this game might be out of reach. They understand the stakes and are playing accordingly. This drive's taken more than three minutes off the clock already as they come up on second down. Again, they'll run with Ingram. And that didn't fool anybody. He's going to be dropped in the backfield. This will be a loss of three and now a much tougher third down looming. Brandon, it's clearly a running situation when you're up in the fourth quarter. They're going to have to stack the box and make it difficult for them to move the ball. Made it very difficult right there. Now they need to repeat that effort. Yeah, bring seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take to slow them down. Here's Jackson to throw. This will be caught by Brown. And they're going to get him down shy of the first at about the 13-yard line. They get seven there, but it brings up fourth. One hallmark of good defenses is understanding the game, understanding positioning, and tackling immediately in the secondary after catches. I think we just saw that on display right there. Got to him before he ever had a chance to think about turning it upfield. And Tucker's kick right there. It's good. And that will get the lead up to 14. So they settle for just the three, but clearly right now anything helps trying to salt this one away in the fourth. Without a doubt, obviously a touchdown probably would have been the final nail to finish this thing off, but they still ate up time, got points. So while it's not mission accomplished, it's darn close. Tucker now following the made field goal, set to kick it away. This is taken about seven yards deep. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Here's the Buffalo offense now as they get set to take over here. And down on the scoreboard, certainly needing to avoid what happened on the last drive, punting the football. Sense of urgency has to take over for them here. They know the score. They know the situation. And by the way, the punter no longer exists for their offense. That's how they have to treat this drive. They need points. Big time. The pass to Brown as he hauls it in. And he's upended at the 33, following a good pickup of eight. At this stage, this drive's got to be touchdown or bust because you need two of them. And if I'm the offensive play caller, I'm not just looking at my dagger plays downfield. I'm looking at some of my specials, something that can fool them and give you a big play now. With a sense of urgency. No doubt. Throwing again on second down. Allen. Now they go screen. It's complete. And he stopped after a gain of one. Not enough. Still a yard to go on third down. You got the big lead defensively, willing to give them that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. Allen looks to throw on third and one, and he can't get rid of it. He's taken down. Whenever you see a team deciding to throw the ball on third and one, as a defensive player, my mindset is we've got them now, and that's why they dialed up the blitz and got after them. 
but occasionally you want to pass it on third and one. I mean, not a lot for sure, but sometimes just to keep the defense guessing. Oh, no doubt. You want to break tendencies as you go along with the game because you don't want them to just say, oh, third and one, we know exactly what they're going to do. But in this situation, as an offensive lineman, as a running back, I want to know why I didn't get the football. So possession goes over here on the punt, and the Ravens, they'll take over. Jackson and the Ravens come up now first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. The drive starts here with a carry by Ingram. Gets this to the 24 for a gain of four. And I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely. You want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. They'll keep it on the ground. Ingram. They'll be brought down on the 30-yard line after a gain of six. Bottom line, they want to keep this clock rolling, so they'll take that one right there. They just want to keep falling forward, and they want to put the onus on the big fellas up front in order to bring this one home. Ready, ready. On third down, Mark Ingram. And he's got the first before he's brought down at the 39-yard line. That gain of nine buys them a new set of downs. Uh, he's still rumbling, isn't he? Still looking fresh in this one despite the heavy workload. But you and I both know, well-conditioned, and he did tell us that he thrives on being at his peak late in ball games. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Now it's Jackson. Open receiver, that's Hayden Hurst, the tight end. And they're well past midfield, just a yard or two shy of the 40. 19 yards there on the catch and run. Another nice pick up through the air, and I think a lot of people might expect them to run the ball in this situation, Brandon, but with this lead, they're electing to throw the football. Swings, slants, quick outs, things that they consider safe. Jackson now, six for six since coming back out of the locker room. It's first and 10. Jackson, it's caught by Roberts. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right at a yard. If nothing else, they've already taken a couple minutes off the clock here already as they come up second down. On second down, it's Hill. And this time, not quite to the 30. It'll be down at the 31-yard line. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. How about this offensive line? They're really starting to establish themselves, take over this game. And before the series began, I know exactly what was said in the defensive huddle. Guys, we got to get no less than a three and out. Let's get off the field. Instead, they can't find any traction towards doing that. Right now, they're just getting muscled all over the field and getting pushed down it. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Run blitz there defensively, something we might see more of here in the fourth quarter. I think we'll see a lot of it, and the difference between that and a pass blitz, pass blitz, you're just trying to get to the quarterback. You're trying to scheme someone open who will get to the QB and make sure he gets on the ground. In a run blitz, you're actually trying to cover up gaps, trying to cover up holes so they can't run the football. Stopped at the 24-yard line after a gain of five. It'll be a gain of five, but still about three yards shy of the first down marker, and now it's third down. From the gun, it's Jackson. Roberts has it. And able to get him down, but he does reach the five. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. He's been the go-to guy. They needed a big play there on third down, went his way, it worked out. Doesn't matter whether they've scouted it or that they think he's going to get the ball. He has a knack for finding his way open and completing the connection. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. 
This will be a two-yard loss on the play. And it'll be second and goal. Jackson going to give this one to Edwards. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. That'll be a loss of a yard, and it leads to a third down. Partner, I know we're in a goal-to-go situation, but my goodness, think about running the ball here. Not even a thought, is yeah, it? Defensively, they're in a prime spot. And I think the defensive guys are probably expressing themselves to them as well. I wouldn't run it here, guys. You might want to try throwing it. Back of the end zone, could he get his feet down? No, it's incomplete. Once you get into the red zone and the safeties have less ground to cover, you'd better be quick with your delivery. Not much space to get a ball in there. Yeah, when that field shrinks with those safeties, it's almost like there's a couple extra defenders out there, right? It certainly is. They end up taking up extra space just because there's not enough space for receivers to run through. Tucker's kick is good. And that'll push the lead up to 17. So with that, you figure yeah, this game's pretty much out of reach at this point. Yeah, it's going to take a heck of a comeback to come from three scores down. But don't change that channel. Don't go away. Miracles can happen. And you want to be here in case it does. You're a company man. Aren't I, though? Tucker now following the made field goal, set to kick it away. This is fielded at the goal line. And the decision to bring it out, a good one, as he's up a yard or two shy of the 30. Now the Bills offense gets ready to head back onto the field. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times the punter goes to the sideline and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. Flushed out right. Now he'll pull it down and avoids the contact by sliding. I guess no need to force it when you can do that instead. First down, 18-yard gain. That's a prime example of how Josh Allen can hurt a defense. You remember back to his rookie season a year ago, 631 rushing yards, second only to Lamar Jackson. Also had eight rushing touchdowns. He is a dual-threat QB. First down, and they're going to throw with Allen. Stepping up, he'll try and run. And he'll slide down to avoid the contact. He'll wind up getting nine after tucking it and running, so it'll leave him with second and a yard. And we have to give credit to him for buying time and extending the play. But you know there's some really upset defenders on that one. They thought that they had him. Instead, he was coated in Teflon and got away. This is a draw play. Allen gives to Singletary. Absolutely nobody fooled there. He's going nowhere fast as he stopped behind the line of scrimmage. That's what I'm talking about. That's Continues to be a struggle for this offense and this home crowd. They're growing a little restless here in the second half. And I think they've just got to look at how they're trying to move the football. Yeah, you want to run it, but maybe you spread it out, maybe some swing passes that can take the place of runs and give you a little more space. Now on third and two, they're going to elect to throw with Allen. Got an open man, it's Foster. And they just keep marching right along. First down on a pickup of eight there. That was a nicely run slant route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route, and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps, and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Yeah. 
So line enemy. of scrimmage, still the 39 on second and 10. Single receiver, single receiver. Hey, you're on an island over there. Single receiver. Watch that. Double tight, guys. Double tight. Now Allen to throw again. And the grab by Croft. That catch good for five. It's third down. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. You're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays harder to move it. Now you've got to hustle your guys to the line and get them set. Now Allen. And that will be incomplete. Well, the trials and tribulations of being a quarterback in this league, it's tough. It's got to be wearing on him out there. Well, he has been sacked a number of times. He had an interception, so I'm going to give him a skosh of credit for hanging in there and trying to make something happen, despite the amount of pressure he's been under this entire game. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. Allen going to throw. He gets it to Brown. Good play. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. Ten yards, good enough for a Buffalo first down. Fourth down trailing in the fourth quarter. They felt compelled to go for it, and they got it. Well, I'd look down at my play sheet, and what I would find, plays have been successful throughout the game that have worked at the distance you need. And that's exactly what they got done. Allen going to get this one to Singletary. And he is brought down at the 22 after a gain of two, and it brings up second down. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers, tight ends, because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big play. Nowhere to turn this time, and he goes down. Sacked back of the 29. Jalen Ferguson gets him for a loss of five. He is so tough to handle on the blitz, and that's exhibit A. So after the sack, Allen and the Bills with work to do on third and long. So they fake the handoff. Now Allen. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. That'll be incomplete with nine seconds now showing on the clock. No move to get the offense off the field here. They've converted once on this drive. On fourth, they'll go again and try it once more. To throw, it's Allen. He's going to let it fly. And that is incomplete. Two seconds left on the clock. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And the Ravens are going to get the football back. And they take a knee. So the final seconds tick away in this Baltimore victory. And it was their defense that really made the statement after the break. They pitched the second half shutout. Yeah, think about the team that just got vanquished. They did score in the second quarter. Do you think they thought at all that that would be their last points of the game? No, I, but what a second half. The adjustment, whatever they did in the locker room, it certainly worked. It certainly did, and you're exactly right. Whether it was an adjustment, whether it was just more focus on what they planned to do going in, whether they just played better, whatever it was, it all came together in the second half, and no point were allowed. That's a great way to close them out. That'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our hardworking crew. I'm Brandon Gaughan. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, find us on Twitter at EA Madden NFL. With that, we say good night from Buffalo. Say none. Try dig dirt, there ain't none. I make the money that saves up.